thank the Senator from Georgia for yielding and ask unanimous consent that I be allowed to address the Senate. Without objection, the Senator from Vermont. Um, Mr. President, um, in Vermont and all across this country, there is huge frustration with what's going on here in Washington. Uh, it is clear to me that with the middle class of this country disappearing, uh, with millions of Americans working longer hours for lower wages, uh, with poverty today at an all-time high in terms of the number of people living in poverty, uh, with young people graduating college deeply in debt and others not having the resources to go to college, with real unemployment at close to 14 percent, youth unemployment higher than that, minority unemployment very, very high, an infrastructure that is collapsing uh, with the IPCC, the scientists all over the world who are studying global warming, telling us that we have a planetary crisis that must be addressed by cutting greenhouse gas emissions. What people are seeing is that we have all of these problems affecting them and their kids and the planet. And here in the United States Congress, we can't even get a budget passed. And people are angry in Vermont and across the country, and they are frustrated. I know, I know that many people are saying a plague on everybody. Uh, you know, you people are all terrible. I just hope that we can go a little bit beyond that and try to understand, in fact, what is happening and what the cause of this terrible government shutdown is and why 800,000 decent people who happen to work for the federal government today are not at work, uh, are not earning a paycheck, are scared to death about how they're going to provide for their families or, or, or take care of other basic needs. How did it happen? Well, I think very simply what we should understand is that the United States Senate passed a conservative, conservative budget, continuing resolution till November 15th, much lower than I had wanted. In fact, it is a Republican budget. It includes this terrible sequestration, something that I strongly oppose. But it was passed as a compromise gesture, sent to the House. Now, here is the most important point that I think people need to understand in terms of what's going on here in Congress. Right now, according to every knowledgeable source, the U.S. House of Representatives has the votes today to pass a clean continuing resolution, the bill that was passed here in the Senate. They have the vote. It's not a question of the Speaker coming forward and saying, gee, I just don't have the votes. They have the votes. The political problem is that the Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives has chosen to be the Speaker of the Republican Party, not of the whole House of Representatives. And what is happening is he has 30 or 40 extreme right-wing people who are absolutely insistent that they want to repeal or defund the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare. And the only way, the only way they will support any budget if there is language in it that defunds Obamacare. Now, the reason why we cannot support that language is not just because Obamacare was passed close to four years ago and signed by the president. It's the law of the land. It's not just because the United States Supreme Court ruled that it was constitutional. It's not just because there was an election held last year in November in which this was perhaps the major issue and the president won re-election by five million votes. And here in the Senate, the Republicans lost two votes, two seats.
And in the House, they lost some seats. So we've been through that issue. It is the law of the land. But the real reason we cannot accept that language is that we would begin to accept a terrible, terrible precedent. And what the precedent would be is it doesn't matter what happens in an election. It doesn't matter what happens in terms of the normal legislative process of the U.S. Congress. What we would be saying is that a small group of people can blackmail the American people, can hold the American people hostage unless they get their way. And if they are successful, Mr. President, if they are successful in succeeding in terms of what they want to do right now, what I can absolutely guarantee you is that in two weeks when this Congress and the White House are going to have to deal with the debt ceiling and the question of whether for the first time in the history of the United States of America we do not pay our bills, the money that we owe, and whether we drive the American financial system and the world's financial system into what economists are describing as a catastrophic situation. Nobody knows what will happen. It has never occurred before that the largest economy in the world would say we are deadbeats, we're not paying our bills. But some economists believe this could have a huge impact all over the world, financial chaos, significant shrinkage of GDPs all over the world, gross domestic products, more and more unemployment and a moment when the world's financial system is already fragile. And you don't have to believe Bernie Sanders in saying that. Ironically, you got all these guys on Wall Street, no friends of mine. You got the Chamber of Commerce and all the multi-zillion dollar businesses. They are saying to the Republicans, don't do it. Don't take us over the edge. It will have a catastrophic impact on the economy. Now, Mr. President, when we talk about what's going on here, I don't want people to take my word for it. I have a political position, uh, and people know what that is. But I want to hear what some responsible Republicans are saying about the reckless actions that are taking place in the House. And I'm not going to read them all, but let me read just a few. These are what Republicans are saying about the House Republican attempt to attach Obamacare to the budget resolution and bring the United States government to a shutdown. Saxby Shambliss, Republican senator from the state of Georgia, he says, he's no friend of Obamacare, he says, I'd love to defend, defund Obamacare too, but shutting down the government and playing into the hands of the president politically is not the right thing to do. Plus, it, it's going to do great harm to the American people if we pursue that course. We've been there. It didn't work. Dan Coats, Republican Indiana, was on the floor here a moment ago. Here's the hard truth. President Obama will not overturn his signature legislation so long as he is president and the Democrats have control over the Senate. Along with these political realities, refusing to pass legislation to keep the government funded will not stop Obamacare from going into effect. Representative Peter King, Republican New York in the House, quote, we should not be closing down the government under any circumstances. That doesn't work. It's wrong. And you know, Obamacare passed. We have to try to defund it. We have to try to find ways to repeal it. But the fact is, we shouldn't be using it as a threat to shut down the government. And many, many, many more Republicans, Republicans are saying the same thing. What we believe right now is that a significant majority in the House of Representatives today are prepared to end the shutdown if the Speaker uh, will give them the opportunities. Uh, Mr. President, interestingly enough, while we have great discussions here about uh, Obamacare, uh, and many of my Republicans co friends come up here to say, you know, how terrible it is. Uh, the American people today 
in a sense, of voicing their opinion on Obamacare all over this country in their homes and in offices all across uh, America. And uh, nationally, more than 10 million Americans have gone on to the website healthcare.gov and other websites to look for affordable health insurance plans under Obamacare or to receive more information. 10 million Americans in a two-day period. The truth of the matter is 48 million Americans have no health insurance, something my Republican friends forget. Many of them are paying much more than they can afford for health insurance. So yes, people want an opportunity to get insurance if they don't have it. They want an opportunity to get more affordable insurance if they can. So while these guys are talking about ending Obamacare, millions and millions of people all across the country are trying to find out how they can get into the program. And these guys are saying, well, we don't care what millions of people want. We're going to defund it. I mentioned 10 million people have gone to the federal website. In my small state of Vermont, more than 13,000 people have visited our, visited our Affordable Care Act website. California, if you can believe this, one state has reported 5 million visits to its Affordable Care Act website. In Kentucky, in Kentucky, more than 78,000 visitors have gone to its Affordable Care website. Importantly, Kentucky is the only state in the South that has chosen to participate fully in Obamacare by both expanding Medicaid and operating a state-level health insurance exchange. New York State, New York State, Almost 10 million people visited the website on the first day. So, Mr. President, to nobody's surprise, if you don't have any health insurance, or if you are having today health insurance that you can't afford, and you're given the opportunity to come into a program which provides you with some help, people are taking advantage of it. And as millions and millions and millions of people are trying to figure out how they can get into the system, we have our Republican friends uh, over in the House who are saying, no, we wanted to fund it. Uh, we don't want to give you that opportunity. Mr. President, uh, there is a website called Nation of Change, a very good website. And I just want to read some of the headlines that they have assembled about how people are responding to the Affordable Care Act. Connecticut, health care plans begin 28,000 plus go online to state marketplace. Georgia, enrollment sites are swamped on first day according to the Augusta Chronicle. Idaho, Idaho health exchange launches with few hiccups, Idaho statesmen. Indiana, insurance marketplace draws strong early interest from the Journal and Courier. Kentucky, Kynect opens to high demand, the Courier Journal. Maine, insurance marketplace opens to flood of interest. Delaware, off and running a new market, website overwhelmed on first day of access. Michigan, insurance exchange de debut draws millions, the Detroit News. New Mexico, Obamacare, plenty of interest, a bevy of computer stacks. On and on and on, Colorado. Heavy traffic slows health website on debut day. All across the country, to nobody's great surprise, people who have no health insurance are saying, yeah, we don't want to go throughout life worrying about whether we're going to go bankrupt or whether we're going to be able to go to a doctor. And they are trying to get more information about the Affordable Care Act, and they are signing up in huge numbers, higher than people had anticipated. And our Republican friends in the House are saying, we don't care that on the first day 10 million people expressed interest in this legislation. We want to end it. We want to end it. So it passed. It's the law. Millions of people are signing up, gaining information, and they are saying, we will continue to shut down the United States government, deny a paycheck to 800,000 
American workers. We don't care what happens to them unless we get our way. And right here in the Senate and in the House, you have sensible Republicans who are saying what is obvious. You don't have to agree with Obamacare. I don't agree with Obamacare. I think it needs to be significantly improved. I believe in a Medicare for all single payer program. But at least Obamacare is providing health insurance to some 20 million Americans today who do not have it. Mr. President, I think it's important to make a point that is not being made often enough in terms of putting what is going on today with this shutdown in a broader context. Of course, we can have an argument over Obamacare. I don't think it's perfect. I want to see it improved. But where our extreme right-wing friends in the House are coming from is a lot more than trying to end Obamacare. And everybody has got to understand that, and I think there is too little discussion on this issue. What we are looking at are a small group of people. These are Tea Party folks, right-wing extremist people, people who are funded by billionaires like the Koch brothers who are worth some $71 billion. And I want to tell you what their vision is for America, because this is not just about Obamacare. It is a vision for America and what these guys want to accomplish. For them, I should say, and some of them have been quite public about it, shutting down the government is great. It is great because they don't believe in the concept of government. And I think one of the good sources that we can use to get a clue as to where these right-wing extremists are coming from is the Texas Republican Party platform of 2010. And I want to use that. I could use other sources. But Texas is a very large state. Uh, Texas is today controlled by very conservative Republicans. And the truth is that the party platform of Texas, of one state, ends up being, the ideas in it end up being adopted more or less by Republicans here in the Congress and all over the country. So what they say is important. This is not some small fringe group, you know, I'm not finding some wacko group out there. This is the state of Texas Republican Party platform of 2012. And I want to be very clear in telling you what this platform that they have is about. And these are the ideas, by and large, that our right-wing extremist friends believe in. So it goes a lot more than Obamacare. This is what the 2012 Republican Party platform states. Quote, quote, we support an immediate and orderly transition to a system of private pensions based on the concept of individual retirement accounts and gradually phasing out the Social Security tax, end of quote. Well, if you phase out the Social Security tax, you are ending Social Security. Goodbye, Social Security. In my view, Social Security is probably the most important program ever passed by the United States government. Today, over 50 million people are in the Social Security system. Social Security has gone a very long way in lowering poverty for senior citizens. Before Social Security, it was close to 50 percent. Now it is somewhere around 10 percent. We've got a long way to go to get that number lower, but we have made real progress. And what they are saying is we want to eliminate Social Security funding, eliminate Social Security, and when you do that, I am not quite sure what happens to a working person when that person is 67, 68, 75 years of age. No Social Security. And for people who doubt me, go to the Texas Republican Party platform. I just read exactly their quote. Quote, this is the other thing they want to do, and I speak now as, as a proud chairman of the Senate Committee on Veterans Affairs. We have oversight over what the Veterans Administration is doing. In the Veterans Administration right now, 
We have about 152 uh, VA hospitals. We have some 900 community-based outreach clinics. We have hundreds of vet centers. And in my view, they're providing not perfect, but pretty good health care for the veterans of America, some six million who are now within the VA health care system. It's something I believe we should expand. I think we should make VA health care available to every veteran in this country. This is what the Texas Republican Party platform says, and I quote, we support the privatization of veterans' health care, end of quote. Now, I'm not quite sure what that means, but it means ending the VA system as we know it, because the VA is a government-funded system. If you privatize it, well, you can do it in a million ways, but most likely sounds to me like you'll give veterans a voucher, something similar to what the Republicans in the House wanted to do with Medicare. Give people a sum of money, go out, find the doctor, hospital you need. I think that is a terrible, terrible idea for the veterans of this country. But again, I quote, Republican platform, Texas, 2012, we support the privatization of veterans' health care. Another plank in terms of what they want, I quote, we support abolishing all federal agencies whose activities are not specifically enumerated in the Constitution, including the Departments of Education and Energy. A end of, do I have a time on that? Yes. I was not aware there was a time. The only, the only time remaining is for Republicans. I see. Okay. Okay. Let me just conclude, if I could ask unanimous consent for two more minutes. Without objection. So ordered. Let me just uh, say this. This debate is a lot bigger than whether or not the Republicans are successful in shutting down the government because of their insistence that Obamacare be defunded. What this real debate is about is whether a minority of people in the House of Representatives are able to blackmail and hold hostage the American people and the United States Congress and the President and say, if we do not get our way, we don't care what happens to 800,000 workers and the millions of people who depend on government service. We don't care. It's our way or the highway. And in two weeks, these same people, I assure you, will be saying, we don't really care if there is an international financial collapse, maybe the loss of millions of jobs. We don't really care unless we get our way. To surrender to that approach would be a horrible, horrible precedent, because I can guarantee you absolutely that if we move down that path of government, they will be back again and again, and maybe next year it is, we're going to shut down the government unless you abolish Social Security. We're going to shut down the government unless you end the concept of the minimum wage, because we don't believe in the minimum wage. So, Mr. President, I would hope that Speaker Boehner becomes the Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives, and not just for the Republican Party. Let the members of the House vote and if they do, I believe this government will be reopened within hours. And uh, Mr. President, with that, I would yield the floor. Senator's time has expired.